Hi. Um, so we're talking about Unit 15 in Hansen and Quinn. Um, the, the last part of the lesson, the part that talks about personal pronouns, I, you, he, or she, or it, and the, and the plural we, you all, as we've been calling it, and they. Um, and then we're going to talk about reflexive pronouns, himself, herself, itself, themselves, yourselves, ourselves. And then we're going to talk about how we use these um, in, uh, in the noun phrases, basically. Um, so it's kind of amazing that we don't get to the words for I and you and he and she until unit 15, okay? But it's important that it's that way, too, because why don't we need them? Well, there are two aspects to it. One of them is the obvious one that you don't need subject pronouns because they're implicit in the verb, okay? Mm -hmm. um, what about object pronouns? You'd think you would want to have them, but it's a really important uh, rule of Greek that I don't think people get taught that's worth teaching. The book doesn't mention it, but that Greek leaves out object pronouns whenever it can. It leaves out him, her, it, mm -hmm. them, um, you, and uh you and so forth and us whenever it can okay it just lets them be assumed right right um, so so on the one hand it's normal Greek syntax to have neither subject pronouns or object pronouns when you really when you really need them you would think is is uh, is in the genitive and the dative and indeed um, you have some interesting things going on with genitive and datives um, but then you start to think to yourself well why do you need these at all okay the subject pronouns, uh, a pronoun in the nominative case and in the accusative case. And you only need nominative and accusative pronouns for emphasis in Greek. Okay, so you never say a go unless you mean I as opposed to her or him or you or somebody else, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the same goes for using the object pronouns. You only do it to be really clear and explicit. And Greek surprisingly fast and loose with them, okay? Um, you have to stick them in in English all the time, and Greeks just assume them all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it's confusing even, okay? Sometimes you can't really tell. So, so it's an important aspect of the language. And the other, the other thing that's cool is that, in the singular anyway, for um, I and you, you have a choice between a stressed form of the dative and the genitive and the accusative of the pronouns and an unstressed form. Um, and, and the stress form is obviously appositional, op oppositional, not appositional. You only use the stress form just like you only use ego, the nominative singular, when you're expressing a contrast. Uh, so it's mine, it's not yours, okay? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. If you're casually saying, let's, uh, let's go find my book, okay, then, then you're not distinguishing it from somebody else's, then you just use the unstressed form of the pronoun. So it's a completely semantic thing in Greek's interestingly um, sensitive to the importance or unimportance of the presence of pronouns in language. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're not. We put them in everywhere we can, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of a thing to get the hang of. All right. Um, the other thing to get the hang of is the inflection of these pronouns, which is according to no rules that we know, okay? In other words, they're very old words, so the, form, the formation, the, the derivation, the case endings, don't look like anything. So here you are. Um, how can you, you know, it's kind of insane that we didn't le learn these words sooner, to be honest, okay? Um, but I think it's also intended to keep you from running away from Greek. <laughs> okay. So here's the, how do you say ego, I, it's ego. Everybody knows ego because it's the same word in Latin, ego. It's not borrowed from Greek. It's an inherited thing. So ego uh, comes from this, obviously. Mm -hmm. But then you get emu, and the, the stem of the rest of the singular, anyway, is em. Emu is genitive. That's pretty good. And mu is the unstressed form. And moi is dative. I think it's got an acute accent, not a circumflex. You'd like it to have. Yeah, see? It has an acute Oh, yes, you would right. expect it to be the same because genitives okay. and dativs usually are yeah. the same, but it's acute. Um, and then moi, the unstressed form, that's an enclitic, okay, mu and moi, and then me and me, which is the same as English me, okay, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, 
it, well, that's the singular, uh, the word that means I. And I think in English, most English speakers think of we as a separate word, mm -hmm. but it's just the whole <laughs> of I. looks totally different. So in Greek, it's totally different too. It's hemes, okay, is the nominative, right? Singular of, he, of we, mm -hmm. the circumflex. Hemon, another genitive plural, at least the ending is fine. Then the dative is totally idiosyncratic, hemin with a long I, and hemas is an accusative plural ending Accented with a circumflex. Yep. They are. So, so what are you going to do with this? Okay, well, at the very least, what we can do before we go any further answering that question is look at the word for you, okay? As we've already learned, by the way, the <laughs> word for he, um, we don't have a nominative word for he, okay? Right. Uh, um, but we have accusative, genitive, and dative, and that's the forms of the word autos. Um, but let's look at you, which is similar to ego, okay? Maybe we can come back and then look at both of them next to each other for mm -hmm. a moment. So the word for you um, is su, S-U, okay? Um, the S should have become an H, and it should be who, mm -hmm. but it got put back in. <laughs> okay, so it's su. And then the genitive is su, S-O-U with a circumflex, and then su with no accent. Again, the, and the stress down stress form. So, soy rather than soy. And then se, and with an accent, and se without, okay? So, so um, <laughs> these, are, these are similar to the inflection of ego. The first one ending in U and O, they don't look like any other Greek nominatives, right? But su and soy and se are vaguely familiar looking, okay, in mm -hmm. terms of endings, their declension endings. In the plural, what we get is the, the stem is H-U-M, okay? So there the H is what's happened to the S. To the S. Mm -hmm. So this is one sumes, okay? And so it's like hemes, hemon, hemin, hemas. That's humes, humon. Who mean, who must, okay? So at least these are in idiosyncratic, but the two pronouns, the one that means I and we, and the one that means you and you all, are analogous to each other. Mm -hmm. So the thing to do is to memorize them as a group, okay? And you just have to get down to memorizing them. And we have to make sure that we give you a quiz about them, okay, when we talk about it. Um, so they're so idiosyncratic that, that, that that's, uh, that's, it's, it's indispensable, really. In a real Greek, you do have them often enough, okay? So um, the, the, the key thing to realize is that you never, any occurrence of a nominative pronoun, su, ego, humes, or hemes, is a stressed thing, okay? Because you never actually need it. The unstressed one mm -hmm. is just no pronoun, right? So they only occur in the nominative and stress ways. And just to remind you that the forms of the word autos, all of them except the nominative, are the words for he, her, and it, and they, okay, um, that we've learned. All right, so that's personal pronouns. We should stop there. Yeah. Sure, let's stop there. And then we'll do